According to scientific research, one-fourth of deaths are actually homicides. Disguising murder as an accident is a skill, and the killer in this case is particularly good at it. He sets up a sniper rifle on the rooftop, but instead of shooting the target, he locks onto a car, adjusts the shooting angle, and shoots out the tire with a CO2 gun. The car then crashes into the target due to a wall behind it, leaving the man paralyzed from the waist down. Since there's no gunpowder involved, the police would assume it's just an accident caused by a punctured tire, without suspecting murder. The killer's name is Jack, and he's the top agent of the assassination company. His colleagues are also talented. Unlike Jack, the large-built brother likes to use an axe to kill his targets without disguising the scene. Poisoning is a common method of assassination, and the poison guy has a naturally sleazy appearance and a penchant for collecting the toothbrushes of his victims. Despite his repulsive tendencies, his methods are simple and effective, making him popular among clients. The two brothers in black and white are retired special forces soldiers who excel at disguising murders as ordinary street crimes. Meanwhile, the beautiful killer is very popular among clients. Lucy once learned swordsmanship from a Japanese ronin, and on the day she became his disciple, she killed him with a single strike. The fat man who picks his nose is a pervert who randomly selects lucky people from the phone book. He once used a gas bomb to wipe out a soccer team. The boss of the assassination company is a retired killer and Jack's mentor. The old man who recently joined the company is the accountant, whose daily job is to contact clients and assign tasks to the assassins. Jack's favorite technique is to disguise the assassination target as a suicide. After completing a mission, he goes to the bar and beats up a few thugs to vent his excess energy. One day, the accountant sent a message saying that he couldn't make it to the meaning to give Jack his mission reward due to a sudden event. Jack went to the rendezvous point that night and found himself being shot at by a man with a submachine gun. He hid behind a car and waited for the bullets to run out, then kicked the man down with a flying kick. However, Jack is more professional when it comes to killing people, and he easily took out the man in just a few moves. After finishing the job, he called the accountant, only to be told that someone had paid to have Jack killed. Jack wanted to know who it was, but the accountant refused to divulge the client's identity, citing privacy protection. Not only did Jack fail to get paid, but his life was also at risk. Unfortunately, more bad news came that night. Jack received a message from Mary, the sister of his ex-girlfriend, saying that his ex-girlfriend had been murdered and asking him to attend the funeral the next day. Jack learned from Mary that his ex-girlfriend was pregnant with his child before she died. He was devastated and couldn't help but feel that there was something fishy about the whole situation. The killer not only didn't run away after the murder but was also caught inhaling flour at the crime scene, and he died from an overdose of it the next day. Moreover, Jack's ex-girlfriend was an environmentalist, frequently confronts several energy giants. It's not like he will be assassinated, right? Jack received case files from his ex-girlfriend through a friend and then went to the murder scene to investigate. Jack went to his deceased ex-girlfriend's house. Based on the police report, he deduced that the killer had climbed the exterior wall pipes and broke into the apartment through a shattered window. The two lunatics didn't steal anything, but lit up a cigarette. When his ex-girlfriend returned, she caught them in the act, and the killer immediately attacked her, stabbing her several times with a kitchen knife. Although they killed her, they didn't take any money and just grabbed some household items and fled. The next day, they died from inhaling flour. The more Jack thought about it, the more suspicious it seemed. He carefully examined the autopsy report and found that his ex-girlfriend's blood contained a medication used to treat fear of flying. Jack didn't remember his ex-girlfriend having this symptom before they broke up. He had a hunch that a professional hitman had done this because in the hitman world, this medication was often used as a truth serum. All the perpetrator needed to do was inject one shot, and the victim would obediently answer all questions. The killer used a knife to cover up the injection site and scattered other people's hair and dandruff at the scene to make it look like a burglary. Jack was familiar with this technique. It was the same one used by his colleagues, the black and white brothers. He was furious and confronted the two in person. The black brother didn't explain and admitted to the murder, but in their eyes, it was just business. When they learned that the victim was Jack's ex-girlfriend, they were even more indifferent, but Jack's ex-girlfriend was pregnant at the time. This was a double homicide. Jack couldn't stand it anymore and attacked them first, even though it was two against one. As the protagonist, he only suffered a few punches and scratches, and he was able to anticipate their fighting moves. In the end, he kicked the older brother over, and he begged for mercy, claiming that the task was provided by an accountant. They were just executors and didn't know who the client was. If Jack wanted revenge, he should go after the accountant first. After listening to this, Jack thought it made sense and immediately went back to the assassination company. The boss saw Jack's angry face and knew he was going after the accountant, so he warned him as a hitman that he should never inquire about the client's real identity. Being emotional is even more taboo, Jack insisted on seeing him. The boss reached under the desk and aimed the prepared handgun at him. Jack knew the boss was his mentor to tolerate him this much. If it were someone else, they would have been lying on the ground already. The two had known each other for almost 20 years, since Jack was 15 and a paper boy. He was chased and beaten up by gangsters every time he delivered papers. The money he earned after a hard day's work was also taken away by force. On that day, while he was running away, he saw a burly man slip into a house. Not long after, the house exploded. Instead of calling the police, Jack decided to follow the burly man. Over the next few weeks, he killed three more people. He killed three more people over the next few weeks. 
The victims were all disguised as accidental deaths. Jack is very interested in this technique, and he is not afraid even if the other party is a killer. He directly brought the recorded video to find the burly man. After watching the video, the burly man was suddenly filled with the desire to kill. But what he didn't expect was that Jack had no intention of reporting him to the police, but rather wanted to become his disciple. But the strong man still wants to kill to silence. As a result, Jack ambushed him instead, and he received a fatal blow to his groin. Come over here. If you kill me, my parents will see the video this afternoon. I have the address here, and you can't escape, Jack said. The burly man laughed after hearing this. He liked the young man's toughness. Jack's experience of being bullied reminded him of himself at the age of 15, but before officially accepting Jack as his disciple, he must personally take down the gang leader who bullied him. Jack picked the lock and sneaked into the room. He didn't steal anything, but instead glued a banknote to the TV antenna. Jack didn't hurry to leave and instead hid among the stinky piles of clothes. At that moment, the homeowner returned and noticed the banknote on the antenna. He climbed onto the railing to reach for it, and Jack seized the opportunity. He rushed forward and pushed the homeowner down from upstairs, completing his first murder. But Jack didn't feel anything at all. A photo of him pushing the person was taken, and now both sides had leverage over each other. The burly man could now rest assured and accept him as his disciple. In the next few years, Jack learned the theoretical knowledge of how to disguise murder as an accidental incident. Jack learned how to prepare poisons and use weapons. The old man taught him everything he knew. Jack learned quickly and gained a good reputation in the industry within a few years. He always listened to his master until his ex-girlfriend and their unborn child were murdered. Jack found his ex-girlfriend's sister, Mary, and asked if her sister had offended anyone before. Then, a male colleague of Jack's burst in and tried to kill Mary. He had entered a state of frenzy and started attacking everyone. Jack had no choice but to fight him off. However, he ended up killing the colleague accidentally. Later, he found the company accountant who was doing a massage and asked him who had hired someone to kill his ex-girlfriend's client. The accountant refused to talk, so Jack used his fists to get him to confess. It turned out that the client was an executive at an oil company who had obtained the right to extract offshore oil by bribing government officials. Because Jack's ex-girlfriend was an environmentalist who had evidence of the oil company's bribery, she brought on herself the disaster of being killed. However, Jack's actions have already crossed the bottom line of the assassination company. The boss saw that his apprentice was about to ruin his own livelihood, so he made a tough decision and issued an order to hunt down Jack. Meanwhile, Jack found the oil company executive and forced him to reveal an important clue. It turned out that Jack had previously used an air gun to kill a person who was his ex-girlfriend's undercover agent in the oil company. The client who hired Jack to kill the undercover agent was none other than the oil company's boss, who wanted to eliminate all witnesses. The conversation was all recorded by the executive. Just as they finished talking, the black and white brothers burst in with machine guns. Jack used the executive as a shield to blocked the harm and quickly defeated two of them while they were reloading. Just as he walked out, he encountered Poison Brother. Fortunately, Jack was quick to react and his surprise attack failed. Poison Brother was useless except for his ability to poison people. However, he insisted on engaging in close combat and, as expected, ended up being beheaded. Next was Fatty. Jack was speechless when he saw the wound from his previous killings. Fatty looked very aggrieved and claimed to be a skilled killer who did not know martial arts. Jack came up with a good idea for him and said, I'm I'm In the end, he arrived at the oil company boss's villa. The boss's bodyguard was his colleague, Lucy. Before they started fighting, Jack asked, do we really need weapons? Lucy wasn't going to back down either, so she gave the boss a katana to hide and decided to fight Jack hand to hand. However, Lucy was no match for Jack without a weapon and soon found herself on the losing end. Then she started to play dirty, asking the boss to throw her the katana. Jack used a desk lamp to defend himself and then snatched the katana away, completing the counterkill. The terrified boss even tried to offer him 100 million pounds, but no amount of money could buy back his ex-girlfriend and child's lives. Jack chopped off the boss's head with one swift strike. Now there was still the accountant to deal with. He went back to the assassination company and found the boss and the accountant. In front of both of them, he played the recording from the executive. The boss found out that the accountant had betrayed his own disciple for money and beat him up on the spot. Jack, on the other hand, said he forgave the accountant. It's not easy for anyone to survive on the streets. After that, he handed the accountant a box of adhesive bandages, which moved him to tears. But what he didn't know was that the box of bandages was used by the fat guy to kill people, coated in poison. The accountant took the box of food and ate it without knowing the danger. Who the fuck do you think you are? Who do you think you are? The angry boss scolded him. You've ruined the assassination company. This is my life's work. But he thought better of it. After all, Jack was his disciple, and he had raised him like his own son. He scolded him for a while, but he couldn't bring himself to do anything to him. In the end, he just kicked Jack out, watching his disciples retreating back. The boss specially reminded him to be careful not to get ambushed. After Jack left the company, the boss even had the mood to laugh. You really dote on him, he thought. In the end, the boss's indulgence of Jack had two reasons. First, he really couldn't bear to kill his apprentice. Second, he's getting old and wants to retire in peace. So he uses his apprentice's hand to eliminate people related to the assassination company. This is actually a win-win situation. After all, making money in that line of work is not difficult. The hard part is how to leave with the money and scathe.